Abe Lassvogel uh, came to us. Uh, he was head of William Morris and said that he had signed Sinatra. And Sinatra was at the low point in his life. That uh, he'd gone sour on his records. He'd had personal problems with mobs and his nightclub was, uh, income was down. And he was really uh, uh, not doing well. And he said that he wanted to do uh, special shows, half hours, and uh, sing a little and do this and that. And he'd, he'd appear weekly for us if we would uh, loan him $30 million. I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, $3 million. $3 million. And uh, the loan to him was something that I was very much afraid of, but he had collateral in his uh, music and in his motion pictures. He had a part of three motion pictures. We made the deal with him. Chesterfield Cigarettes again. They were his sponsor. They, were his, uh, they fought like mad to get him as their spokesman. He was smoking heavily then anyway. But uh, the show just flopped terribly. It just went to hell in a handbasket. We decided uh, with, uh, uh, with Timex to change the contract from a weekly concept to six shows a year. Now, Frank was in a real funk. He started a record company, Reprise, I think the name of it was which he later sold, and that's where I got the $30 million. He sold it to Warner Brothers for $30 million. That's where he got most of his wealth back. But in this course of discussion, we couldn't convince him that he ought to do an hour special. He wanted to do, uh, he wanted to continue the show the second year, and we were obligated to do it or pay off. So Leonard Goldenson and I flew out and this is in Leonard Goldenson's book. We flew out to meet with Frank Sinatra. Sammy Kahn was there with him and was acting as sort of as Sammy always did as an intermediary for all the famous people around him. We sat at the Sands Hotel and we knew we were coming and he stood both of us up for four days. Never came down. Uh, finally, Leonard wrote, Goldenson wrote him a note that was more than I think he should have written, but he wrote it and left it. We got back to New York and Abe Lassvogel phoned and said, he'll do the special. So we changed with Timex of the specials. So now we had another break there. Uh, Colonel Parker came in and said, Elvis Presley is coming out of the, out of the military and I want to put him in a prominent place and I'll give you two songs, no more than two songs, that's all. Encore, nothing, two songs. And so we called Frank and actually we called Abe last forward and said, see what he thinks of this. So Lash Fogel, out of the deal, made a deal with Colonel Parker to share and he double representation of Elvis from then on with William Morris and but anyway, Elvis appeared on Frank's first show. And the surprise was that Frank took Elvis immediately. I thought, he is no more going to show up on the same stage with Elvis Presley than fly, but he did. And it was, a, it was a terrific show, and his next few rated satisfactorily. And they were half Time X and half uh, Chesterfield. They were, they were a financial success. We got out of it. His record uh, company started going pretty good. He put out a series of dance tunes that were very successful, and uh, reprise records were sold to Warner Brothers later. But I, uh, the next time I saw him was, uh, was when I was in Washington with, uh, with Richard Nixon and, and uh, uh, Spiro Agnew. And he was a big pal of Spiro Agnew's. 
and uh, ran into him quite accidentally. Uh, but we never were friends after that. He always thought I did him in and not letting him continue in the second year. <laughs>